Welcome back to the Property Management Show. I'm your host, Marie Tepman from Four and Half Marketing Agency. Since 2012, we have helped hundreds of property managers get more owner leads through marketing, whether you need a website, SEO, reputation management services, content creation, pay-per-click ads, we can do it all. Visit our website, fourandhalf.com. That's F-O-U-R-A-N-D-H-A-L-F.com. We have the pleasure today of speaking with Matthew Kaditz, a senior product leader at Appfolio and a former property management business owner. Welcome to the show, Matthew. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, and so I alluded to this in the intro. Before joining Appfolio, you actually had a property management company, which was founded in 2006. And our listeners may recognize that as right before the Great Recession. And can you tell us a bit about that company and how it was like when you started? Yeah, so um, in 2006, I was getting out of college and real estate was hot. So why not get into real estate? My my education was in computer science. I knew I didn't want to be a programmer. And um, I found an opportunity to grab a management agreement for family friends of ours that were looking for long-term management. They were developing property and looking for long-term uh, management of it. And that was my first contract and that's how it got going. So 2006, you know, I thought I was going to become a millionaire, get involved in real estate, make a bunch of money. <laughs> um, and you know, they, first year, year and a half, I realized I had no idea what I was doing. And so I needed to learn the business. Um, and so I didn't really get aggressively into growth. I was more just focused on how do I learn how to be a property manager um, and spent the first couple of years really doing that. But, you know, that led us right into the, the 2008 recession and housing kind of falling apart and all of that type of stuff. Yeah. And so at what point did you feel that something weird was going on? You know, um, it was it was probably in 2008. And I wasn't as connect. I, I mean, I was very young. So, right, I didn't like totally get what was going on. But um, my, my dad, who was had his own business that he sold and was working at the places, place he sold it to, was laid off. And I had never seen my dad without work my whole entire life. And so to see him laid off, he was laid off very early in all of this. It was an insurance company he was working for. So obviously they were a little bit in front of some of the the rest of it. And mm-hmm. and uh, I realized at that point, like it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And so um, that was probably like the canary in the coal mine. After that, we we started seeing homes go into foreclosure in the communities that I was in. Um, we started seeing people just abandoning their houses um, altogether. They just kind of like disappeared. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in a second home community. So it was, it was very like not a lot of permanent residents um, in, in the, the area I was in. So it was probably a little bit easier to let go of a second home to save your first home. <laughs> So it's not like people that were, were my clients were necessarily suffering, but it was quite interesting just to see, you know, a, a 20% of the homes just got left and the value got cut in half um, very quickly within 12 months. Wow. That must have been really scary for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even projects like I, I, I was in a high growth market the time in 2006 there were a lot of new high rises getting built and like a lot of big opportunity and all of those stopped construction crews left they uh, they stopped building um sales teams stopped selling because there was no one to sell to and you know it changed pretty substantially so you know luckily um property management is fairly resilient and i had business from both uh, community association management, property management, and then we were doing maintenance um, as well. So our business model was sound, but the the ability to grow was not as attractive simply because the market wasn't growing in our area as aggressively. Yeah. Which area were you in, by the way? 
So uh, I was across the U.S. border in Mexico and down by a small town called Rosarito, right across from San Diego. So maybe a 45 minute drive from San Diego. And so, you know, you, you lived through the recession and you kind of continued on. Were there any difficult decisions you had to make during that really scary time? Uh, good question. Um <clears throat> So, yes, I built the business with a business partner of mine, and um, we, it was right around 2008, it became uh, clear that like growth and expansion wasn't going to happen at the rate because we were kind of banking on a lot of new construction to come online, and that wasn't going to happen. So we had a chat, and he ended up um, leaving the business at that point. And so that was challenging because... He was I, he was my person I leaned on. He spoke fluent Spanish. I didn't at the time and, and also was running most of the maintenance stuff. So he decided to go pursue other opportunities um, and I stayed around running that business. So that was a it was a hard decision. Um, I think it was it was the right one. The business couldn't have supported both of us at that point. Um, you know, what was interesting is like everyone was very much in wait and see mode. Um, uh, even people that thought about maybe I'll rent my house, maybe I won't. The, the, there was a lot of wait and see. So if you were in foreclosure or losing it, people were very tentative to make any sort of plans in that market, for example. And so um, there was enough recurring revenue to support me and the business. And uh, I figured it would change at some point. And so we just kind of stuck it out. And so, you know, you survived, you know, by, you know, by hook or by crook. <laughs> um, and then, you know, as we've talked in the past, you eventually exited the business. What was that decision to exit influenced at all by having to go through a recession as an entrepreneur? Um, yeah, I would say like, yes and no. Um, I loved building the business. It was really fun to learn how to run a property management company it was really fun to solve complicated uh, logistical problems um i really liked building the business i liked the growth pieces of it and um what what i missed though was working with a bigger group of people um i missed having more colleagues to collaborate with um i was in a small market you know it was a small company we were 450 units at the top with maybe 30 employees, but a lot of that was like maintenance type um, headcount. And so I, I wanted to be part of something bigger. And I ran into um, the large firm out of Texas that they had a competitive deal and um, they had done a great job building a really great business. And they offered an opportunity for me to join up with them and continue to grow and have some more support for me at that point you know i went out of college and started a property management business i wanted to be around in more people that would challenge me and push me and it felt like a good opportunity um, to get some bigger resources interact with some other colleagues and and continue to grow and have some more opportunity than um, just kind of sticking it out on myself yeah so you kind of felt like you needed more than what your imagination could kind of come up with. So you wanted to join like a bigger group and kind of see like, you know, maybe there are other ways to do this. Well, right. And, and like, for example, I had a software engineering background. So like all of the software we used was like stuff I cobbled together um, via like whatever grunt work I could do to put software together. So some of it was stuff I built. Some of it was like integrating QuickBooks with whatever via like bad integrations and, and uh, like working with a bank payment portal to, to deal with payments and like some, some very like, like today you look at the marketplace and you look at all this software and tech available. It's like so different than it was back in, you know, 10 years ago even. And, and so I, w I wanted like access to better technology. I wanted some of those types of things. You know, back back then, when if I wanted to buy like real property management software system, it was like, oh, well, the licenses start at like ten grand, and and we we're small. Ten grand's like quite a bit of money, 
as opposed to like, you know, a 200, 300, 400 dollar monthly recurring fee. Mm -hmm. uh, those weren't options back then. Yeah. And how, how fast it has changed, right? And now, you know, you're on the vendor side for one of the biggest property management softwares in the market. And finally, your training in software engineering is being put to use. <laughs> Well, it, that's funny enough. Not, not really. <laughs> um, I, I'm in a product leader, so uh, our our ability to to write code is not not what gets us paid. Um, thank God, because I wouldn't be making very much money if, if I had to write code. But um, y you know, uh, I think just being able to understand engineering and think through how do we put the right problems in front of them and and think through solutions collaboratively is definitely having a background as software engineering has helps here at Appfolio as, as I've tried to, you know, really push, um, push us to think through what is the innovation that's going to make our product can, is very successful for our customers in the next year, you know, three to five years. It's important that we continually focus on. Out of curiosity, um, what prompted you to make another jump, you know, so initially you um, exited your small business, joined a bigger group, but what prompted you to leave that group and go to the vendor side of the business? Yeah, good question. So um, I had grown the business for the market I was in about as much as I could. Um, and each additional contract just ended up being a lot of extra work with very little upside. And the company that uh, acquired us um, just didn't, it, it wasn't like we were ever going to be a big office for them. Um, we were in a small market. It was going to be hard to really stand out. And I just didn't see a lot of opportunity continuing to, to run that office for them. Um, we had successfully doubled our size from the point of acquisition uh, till the point I left. So we had a lot of success, but um, I just didn't see a lot of growth. And I also wanted to like go to an office with people that uh, were smarter and more talented and had done things before. And so I went back to look to work for a tech company and, and I was trying to find something very different than property management, to be honest. Um, but, you know, as you know, I didn't get very far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you try to run away, but it's still. I, I tried to run away, and you know, I showed up at Appfolio just for to to learn more about it, and you know, spent some time with uh, one of the founders, and just the, the founders' vision for this company and what they were building, how they were building it, how customer centric they were, how much they cared about building really great products. So it resonated uh, with you. It 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 was like. Oh my gosh, I would have loved to have a company that was trying to build something for me as I was running a small business. And and it's been a lot of fun to be able to deliver software for customers that in some cases have changed their life. Like they've got to go on vacation. I remember early on as the customers calling and going, thank you so much. I haven't been on vacation during rent week for 35 years. Now I can go on vacation and that's it's like very rewarding to me to make impact on small business um owners i think it's just a lot of fun to change people's lives um, yeah yeah and you know given that so in your current position and your whole journey through folio you've been working with owners of property management companies large and small given that we're all at the cusp of a brand new recession what advice can you give them given the fact that you survived a recession as a property management entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, so good question. I think um, this this recession, uh, got to pay attention to where the opportunities are. Um, everyone's going to be different. The fundamentals of this are just very, very different than the 2008 recession. In 2008, no one knew it was happening and everyone was trying to figure out what was going on. We've been talking about how we're going into a recession for over 12 months now. So so we know what we're getting ourselves into. Um, and and it's unlikely this is as bad as um, the 2008 one. And if it is, then 
we were caught off guard, right? Like it's that's not what's being talked about. The Fed is purposely trying to drive up interest rates to slow the housing market down <laughs> because inflation is high and they need to drive inflation down. So the fundamentals are different. So paying attention to where the opportunities are and how to be opportunistic, um, I think is really smart. Um, I sold my company coming out of the, the 2008 recession. I think that was a good choice. Um, so just also if certain fundamentals aren't working, selling probably isn't the right time because stuff changes, you know, mm. like if you can hold out for three to five years, it's going to be a different world, yeah. especially these days, everything just seems to change so fast. And so, um, yeah, th this one, it'll be interesting. There's a lot of theories about what's going on. There's a lot of, uh, uh, cash on the sidelines yeah. waiting for deals. And so it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens um, as things go south. Like, w will housing really get bad? It seems unlikely because of the amount of people that are excited about the recession yeah. as, as, as an opportunity to buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you mentioned earlier that you, back then you were in both association management and in like traditional property management and how despite everything was going around, it was good to kind of have both in your um, uh, in, in your operations. Um, and I feel like the lesson from there is don't put your eggs in just one basket. Sure, sure. Um, having, having diversity of income is really important. I mean, we hear that a lot in the industry about diversifying revenue. Um, it, it makes everything a little bit more stable, whether it's association management, which it's own animal or, or even just running a maintenance operation, which can be highly profitable. Um, stuff needs to get maintained. Yeah. That's not going to go away. So, yeah, well, I really appreciate the stories and the insights that you shared with our audience today, Matthew. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It was great to have a conversation with you. That's a wrap for this episode of the Property Management Show presented by Four and Half, the marketing agency that keeps property management businesses booming. Whether you need help with a website, SEO, reputation management, content creation, pay-per-click ads, you name it, we can do it all. Visit our website, fourandhalf.com to learn more. That's F-O-U-R-A-N-D-H-A-L-F.com. And don't forget, if you like our show, please, please leave us a review or a rating on your favorite podcast app so that others like you can find it. We have a lot more exciting episodes in store for you, so stay tuned and see you next time.